This is Morning Prayers at St. Peter's, Ipswich, brought to you online, a place where we study God's Word together and where we join our hearts and our voices before the throne of God, praying for the needs of our world, our church and ourselves. Welcome this morning. Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer from St. Peter's Church, Ipswich, Redditch on this Friday the 12th of April. My name's Linda Nicholas and I'm part of the ministry team at St Peter's and I'm pleased to welcome you to join with me this morning. This is our final visit to morning prayers for the week and this week we have been using some parts of common worship and today we will be following the lectionary readings. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. and an Easter anthem. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying he died to sin once for all. In living he lives to God. See yourselves therefore as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For us, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Now our first reading today is Psalm 57. That's Psalm 57, and it's a psalm of David uh, when he fled from Saul in the cave. That's Psalm 57. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge until the destroying storms pass by. I cry to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me. He will put to shame those who trample on me. 
God will send forth his steadfast love and his faithfulness. I lie down among lions that greasily devour human prey. Their teeth are spears and arrows, their tongues sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. They set a net for my steps. My soul was bowed down. They dug a pit in my path, but they have fallen into it themselves. My heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody. Awake, my soul. Awake, O harp and lyre. I will awake the dawn. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is as high as the heavens. Your faithfulness extends to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Tender God, gentle protector in times of trouble, pierce the gloom of despair and give us with all your people the song of freedom and the shout of praise in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our second reading today, and we're carrying on with, with the Exodus stories, the second reading is Exodus 18, 1 to 12. Exodus 18, 1 to 12. Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for his people Israel, how the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. After Moses had sent away his wife, Zipporah, his father-in-law, Jethro, took her back along with her two sons. The name of one of them was Gershom, for he said, I have been an alien in a foreign land. And the name of the other, Alisa, for he said, the God of my father was my help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came into the wilderness where Moses was encamped at the mountain of God, bringing Moses' son and wife to him. He sent word to Moses, I, your father-in-law Jethro, am coming to you with your wife and her two sons. Moses went out to meet his father-in-law. He bowed down and kissed him. Each asked after the other's welfare and they went into the tent. Then Moses told his father-in-law all that the Lord had done to Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake, all the hardship that had beset them on the way, and how the Lord had delivered them. Jethro rejoiced for all the good that the Lord had done to Israel in delivering them from Egypt. Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord who has delivered you from the Egyptians and from Pharaoh. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods, because he delivered the people from the Egyptians when they dealt arrogantly with them. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, brought a burnt offering and sacrifices to God. And Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law in the presence of God. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, the main point that jumps out at me in this passage from Exodus is that as Christians, we must always witness to the Lord. In verse one, we read Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for his people Israel, how the Lord had brought Israel 
out of Egypt. Jethro had heard all about the great things that the Lord had done. And I was just thinking, how inspired we feel when we hear a testimony how of how God is working in people's lives and people being healed and all the other wonderful things that God is doing for us. When I was a young Christian um, in Cornwall many years ago, looking back, I think my faith seemed quite lukewarm. And I thought that that was it. I thought that that was what it was supposed to be like until much later on, I was so overcome and filled with the Holy Spirit that I thought, wow, it is better than, than I thought it would be. But when I think of my faith in that days, in the latter days, I believe that this was due to maybe the people around me in, in my local church and in the village, uh, people around me not talking about their faith or how God was working in their lives. So I didn't have that inspiration from others who bore witness to what God was doing in their lives because nobody seemed to share it. The goal of witnessing is really the worship of God through Christ Jesus. We do not witness to convert sinners to believe in the existence of God, nor do we witness to make people moral nor to move them to have our own political views. No, we testify to others concerning Christ and the victory that he has won for us so that men and women, boys and girls, would turn from their sins, believe in Christ, be reconciled to God through faith in him, to give him the worship that is due to his name. And this is the goal of our witnessing. And for it to happen is through the spirit of God. The spirit of God must work upon the hearts of the people that we are witnessing to, for them to be regenerated. And we pray for that to happen, that God would do his work in the hearts of the people as we are faithful to do ours by telling others of the glory of Christ. We can just tell them God is the one that does the work. We just help. And it's truly marvellous to consider how Jethro, the priest of Midian, responded to Moses' testimony concerning the way that the Lord had worked for Israel. Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord who has delivered you from the Egyptians and from Pharaoh. Now I know. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods because he delivered the people from the Egyptians when they dealt arrogantly with them. He knew because he'd heard all of the great things that God had been doing. When Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, brought, brought a burnt offering and sacrifices to God and Aaron came with him with all the elders of Israel, to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law in the presence of God. If we hope to witness regularly and in the right spirit, we must contemplate, comprehend and cherish the significance of the victory that Christ has won for us in our own hearts. In this way, we will be moved to witness, not by mere duty, but by a true love for God and our fellow human being. We must have the worship of God as our aim wherever and whenever we witness. Many other benefits come through faith in Christ, but our supreme aim must be the glory of God in Christ. Let us pray. Liberating God, in love you have set us free, free from slavery to sin and self, free to know and love you, free to follow and serve you. 
We praise you for your faithful love toward us and for the many ways you have demonstrated that love to us. We see your love in the natural world around us, in the sky and the trees and the rivers. We see your love in the gift of your commandments, the rules for living that guide us into the right relationship with you and with the people around us. And we see your love in Jesus Christ, who lived and died to bring us life. Because we have experienced your love, we come before you with confidence, bringing our needs and the needs of the world. God, in your unfailing love, hear our prayer. In the diocesan diary today, we pray for the Kidamir is more rural team for their parish during, during an exciting time of challenge and change. Pray for God's abundant love to surround them and all whom they serve in the community at a time of reorganisation and especially for the continued growth of the school's ministry. We pray for their clergy, Sean Armstrong, and their readers, Leuven Beer and Ian Strongmer. God, in your unfailing love, hear our prayer. We pray for those who live surrounded by violence, whether from war or political unrest, crime or domestic abuse. We pray for those who have been victims of violent crime and for those whose loved ones have been injured or even murdered. God, in your unfailing love, hear our prayer. We pray for those who find themselves involved in crime, whether by choice or through coercion, those caught up into gangs or prostitution, those who have turned to crime to pay for their addictions, those who are imprisoned. God, in your unfailing love, hear our prayer. We pray for our homes and families, for parents juggling the responsibilities of work and family, for husbands and wives whose marriages are breaking down, for children who just don't feel safe in their homes, for families not able to manage in the current financial climate, for family members who are ill at this time, for those who mourn. And we pray in the quiet of our hearts, those people known to us who need your help. God, in your unfailing love, hear our prayer. And we pray for the many people in our world who do not yet know you and have not experienced the new life that comes from knowing Christ Jesus, who continue to search for purpose and meaning. God, in your unfailing love, hear our prayer. Merciful God, give us strength and courage to keep your commandments, to live in faithful obedience to your will. Guard our hearts and minds from all that might distract us from living out our commitment to you. Help us to find our true worth in knowing you more fully and serving you more faithfully. In the name of Jesus Christ, our cornerstone, we pray. Amen. And we pray the collect for today, the special prayer for today. Almighty Father, you have given your only son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. 
Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth, through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And may the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Well, thank you for joining with me this week. And it's been great to have you along. More morning prayers next week, weekdays at 10 o'clock. But please do join us if you can for Holy Communion this um, this Sunday at 10.30. So I hope to see you there. So bye for now.